I'm going to spend a few minutes today talking about the concept of joined up government and how this applies to what our council is doing at Timbrell Park. Now joined up government was something that Tony Blair got onto when he was uh, the UK Prime Minister and it's this idea of trying to get all the government departments under your control to actually work together to a common aim and not work against each other and, and the problem you find at all levels of government and between levels of government is you'll have Department A doing something which directly conflicts with what Department B is doing or they have some overlap but they don't coordinate and so they do things in a disjointed and, and very expensive manner. Well that's enough of Tony Blair, let's talk about Timbrell Park. Now back in November, December 2019, uh, Council engaged some consultants to uh, obviously consult with the community about what to do with Timbrell Park and develop a master plan and they uh, released their report in July 2020. So it's you know, coming on a year since Council got their hands on the report and had a good read of it, and I, I guess accepted it. Now, the consultation process was quite thorough and very well done, and I took part in it, and in fact, so did my kids. Council did this in a number of ways. They had uh, on-site staff on a number of occasions. They put up these little pop tents down at the park, at both ends of the park, and kind of nabbed people as they went by. So, you know, dog walkers and people down there playing soccer and cricket and bike riders and people going down to Livy's place and, you know, people going down to get a coffee, all that kind of stuff. They got a really good range of feedback, I think, from a lot of people. And, and they were nice people too. The other thing they did is on the Council Collaborate site, they put up an interactive map where you could put lots of you put your ideas up and clearly they got lots of ideas. It was, I think, a, a very thorough uh, and engaging process and well done for that. So, you know, it, they've come out with quite a comprehensive uh, report. The thing is, though, are they using it properly? Well, the consultants tabulated up all the issues and they categorised them and this list of issues went on for a couple of pages. But let's just have a look at issues uh, numbers 6, 12 and 13. So coming in at number 6 was pedestrian cycle crossing of Henley Marine Drive. Number 12 was traffic on Henley Marine Drive. And number 13 was pedestrian cycle crossing of Timbrel Drive. And all the other issues had to do with, you know, the sports field surface, the toilets, dog exercise, parking, the amenities block. And look, certainly the dog exercise part has already been addressed by council. There's now a dog exercise area. And they have a DA uh, underway to flatten and rebuild the amenities block, which is nice because the old block's looking a little bit manky. But what have they been doing about uh, the pedestrian cycle crossing? And I, I would have categorised this as safe access to the park for people of all ages and abilities. Yes, I know that video is not from Timbrel Park, it's from a few blocks away, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go back to the report and have a look at how people actually get to Timbrel Park. Now, 65% said they drive, 48% walk, and 28% ride a bicycle. Now, they don't add up because some people might walk one day and drive another day. But if you look at the active transport component, that actually comes to 76%, which is larger than the number of people that drive or the proportion of people that said they drive there. So it's interesting that although that's the, the active transport is the primary way most people get to the park, there's been absolutely no focus on providing safe access into the park. I mean, there's lots of good stuff going on about what you can do when you get to the park, but that's no good if you can't actually get there in the first place, if you're prohibited uh, from getting there by traffic mainly that's just too dangerous to get across the road. Now the reason I put this video in was to show just how challenging it can be to get across the road if you're old and no longer very mobile but it's just as bad if you're a parent and you've got a pram you've got to get across the road particularly if you've got a kid in a pram and a kid that can walk say three years old and you've got to hold their hand. Getting across a road like this is an absolute nightmare but if you've got three kids it's even worse. Uh, it's, it's just absolutely terrifying at times and it's you know it's no better if you're um, if you're a carer and you're pushing someone in a wheelchair you know anyone in these circumstances knows what it's like to get across a busy road and there was a lot of feedback in the uh, to the consultants that went over two two three pages on the safety of getting across into the park and there was lots and lots of good ideas in here about you know, level crossings and wombat crossings and improving islands and calming the traffic and all that kind of stuff. So, given that it's just it's been about a year since the council got the report, what have they done about these good ideas? 
Our place of interest is Henley Marine Drive at the intersection of Norman Street and Connecticut Avenue. And it's a horrible three-way intersection. But Council, in the last couple of weeks, came along and demolished the existing um, concrete islands on either side and put in some new stuff. So there's now ramps uh, on either side and the island in the middle has a cut through. So if you've got a wheelchair, wheelie walker, um, uh, pram, etc., you can now safely get across the road um, on the um, western side of Henley Marine Drive. Okay, from an access perspective, that's really great. Just a couple of small problems with this. First, they did nothing to narrow the throat of the road. And so, you know, you might be able to step out onto the road safely, but you can still be clobbered by drivers hooning around the corner at high speed, which happens here. People come flying around Henley Marine Drive and go screaming up Connecticut Avenue, particularly the rat runners. So yes, you can step out onto the road, but you'd be risking your life getting across it. So, ah, you know, kind of, you gotta ask yourself, what's the point? Now, for some unknown reason, you might notice there's no ramps over on the other side of the road that will allow you to actually cross the road to get into Timberall Park. And this is a similar feature at the other intersections along here, where just at the next intersection, there's only one ramp and it doesn't really line up with ramps on the other side of the road. So council seems to not want you to cross Tim this uh, Henley Marine Drive for some reason to get into Timberall Park. I wonder why? I mean, do they think it's too dangerous to get across the road? And if they put ramps in, there's gonna be liability issues. Well, isn't that a tacit um, admittance that there's serious problems with vehicle speeds and sight lines here and something has to be done about it. So it's great that ramps have now been put in so you can actually get across the roads here um, in an accessible fashion. But you got to wonder why the throat of Connecticut Avenue and Norman Street wasn't narrowed like it is at the next intersection at Minnesota to reduce vehicle speeds going around the corner because you know there's no point stepping out slowly with a pram or a walker or a wheelchair and then getting clobbered by a driver hooning around the corner. But the main point here is the, the, the way people actually want to get across the road here is not up and down, it's left to right. They want to get from the residential area into the park and vice versa. They want to uh, you know, walk their dogs from their house down to the park. They want to walk, they want to park in these side streets perhaps or on the other side of the road and get their kids to soccer or cricket or uh, baseball. They, they want to um, you know, be able to get to Libby's place if, if they're going down to the playground there. And particularly, how the hell do you get across the road here if you've got, uh, you know, say kids in wheelchairs that you want to get to Libby's place? It, it, anyway, this comes back to this whole idea of joined up government and what's going on. So councils, uh, you know, they started consulting on this in late 2019. They got the, the, uh, the, the feedback in mid 2020 and that feedback said people want to get across this road safely and nothing's been done about it. Yet they put this in with no kind of overarching thinking about how does this fit into the master plan of getting people across this road from left to right, um, you know, not just going up and down uh, Henley Marine Drive. And you know, as you can see, there's, there's no ramps put in. Now, as I said earlier, is that just uh, you know, really saying, look, it's just not safe to cross here? Um, you know, and admitting that there's a, there's a serious problem here with pedestrian safety. Um, but, you know, it's just kind of been covered up by not putting in ramps. Now, this takes us to Council's local movement strategy, which was put out, well, two years ago today, 15th of May 2019. Happy birthday, local movement strategy. I wonder if anyone's bothered to open you since you were published. If we go to the vision of, and objectives, one of them is create great streets, places and buildings for people. Another one is connect neighbourhoods and centres. Now, what's Timbrell Park? Timbrell Park to me is a centre. What's across the road? A neighbourhood. So what does the strategy say we should do? Connect the two together. Elsewhere in the local movement strategy, it says they want to be promoting walking and cycling for local trips by upgrading walking and cycling facilities to improve everyday access within neighbourhoods, including links to foreshore, bushland, parks and centres. So how does this work fit into the local movement strategy? Think clearly, it doesn't. It comes back to joined up government. We don't have it. We have disjoint government. Now there's three areas within Canada Bay where uh, council has set specific targets for reducing car usage and you can see they want to reduce it by 26 to 29 percent in Homebush, Burwood and Kings Bay. 
Now, given that this is what council's trying to do, you'd think they'd have no problems with trying to also reduce car usage in the five dock area and also around Timbrell Park and promote active transport instead. I mean, after all, you've got the Bay Run there. It's the premier place for people to walk, cycle, run, scooter, all that kind of stuff. Timbrell Park is this great outdoor activity area for people of all ages and abilities. You'd think this kind of thinking would apply there as well. So in that case, any measures which... Uh, improve the safety of crossing the road if they impinge on vehicle traffic well what's the problem because the the policy context in that the local movement strategy is operating in is we, we don't want all these cars we'd prefer people don't drive so you know again the thinking needs to be joined up to say we're just going to have to accept that yes we can put in um, you know, level crossings and speed cushions and narrow the roads, etc., to slow people down and perhaps uh, encourage them to use other forms of transport. You know, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Now, I just want to finish by showing you the road hierarchy from the local movement strategy. So we start with a table of state and regional roads, and you can see that Henley Marine Drive is not listed here. Similarly, if we go onto a map that shows all the uh, state and regional roads around the Canada Bay area, it's not there. And if we go to the um, AM to our peak period road volumes, it doesn't show up there either. So clearly, you know, Henley Marine Drive, it's a council controlled road, not an RMS controlled road, and it's not a major busy road, but somehow it gets treated in the same way as, you know, Great North Road, etc. of, you know, oh my God, we can't possibly put crossings along it because it's a major thoroughfare. Well. According to the strategy and the consultants and the RMS, etc., it's not. You know, it's, it's just not. I mean, these maps prove it. So, you know, the thinking that we can't touch the road because it's, it's RMS controlled. No, it's not. It's council controlled. Oh, we can't touch the road because it's a, it's a busy thoroughfare and it's a, you know, it's a major, um, you know, road during, used during peak hours. Well, no, it's not. It's a, it's a rat run during those times of the day. And because it's wide open and is, in fact, fairly low traffic, it suffers from very high speeds. And, you know, you have some absolute maniacs speeding around there at, you know, different times of the day getting from A to B. So, you know, we go back to this joined up thinking, you know, we've got the, the local movement strategy, which says, um, you know, we want to reduce car traffic. Uh, this is not a major road. It's, it's not, you know, any, any type of connector road. Um, we go to the Timbrell Park Master Plan where everybody wants to get across the road safely to get into the park and none of this seems to match up with what's actually happening. Now I know it takes a long time you know, to, to plan these things and get budget for them and all that kind of stuff but we just don't seem to be seeing any progress here in actually making Timbrell Park accessible. You know, there's lots of work going on to make Timberwolf Park, a nicer place to get to with new amenities blocks, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, upgrading of Libby's place. You know, this is all good, but you still got to get people in and out of the park safely. And given that, you know, 76% of respondents said they ride there or they walk there, and that's a greater percentage than drive, surely the focus should be on those people. You know, bugger the drivers, make it safe to get across the road. Well, we had a look at the Timberwolf Park Master Plan. We had a look at the Council's local movement strategy. And Council is also in the process of developing a PAMP, which will hopefully be released shortly. Now, my worry is it's just it's going to be accepted by Council at a meeting. It's going to be added to this web page of all the other plans and strategies Council's got. And in fact, there's actually more than this. Uh, this is just, you know, some of them. And none of them are going to be joined together. They'll all be functioning in isolation uh, because I guess you know as Tony Blair says managing government is hard and getting people to coordinate is hard and you know will it ever be done properly so you know because what we're looking for here is the strategies to be linked together so we can actually link things like our neighborhoods and our parks so yes it's great that as I guess as part of some access strategy uh, this intersection has been improved but Look, I think nothing's been done to improve the safety of the crossing because of you know, the, the excess of vehicle speeds going around the corner. And nothing has been done about improving access across the road to the park, which is probably where most of the people want to go. So, you know, what's the point? Really, you know, what's the point?